Welcome to the church house today. So good to see you in the house of the Lord on this beautiful, beautiful fall. Is it fall? It still yeah. is fall, oh. yes. <laughs> like another seven days and then it'll be winter. Praise God. It's so good to see you here today. From Mankato, from Pharaoh, from Albert Lee, all over. And then wherever, from wherever you're watching today, God bless you. Welcome to the house of the Lord today. We're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. We've got some great Christmas songs to sing, and we're going to enjoy each other and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Are you happy to be in God's house today? Yeah. Go ahead and clap your hands to the Lord today. Amen. And we are welcoming those of us that are, those that are our guests, not us, but our <laughs> guests that are at the Freeborn County Hotel. God bless you, all of our inmates in the Freeborn County Jail. We bless you today. We welcome you. You'll be watching this service next Saturday uh, there at the Freeborn County Jail, but it's going to touch your heart. And we just want you to know the whole world has not forgotten you. We are remembering you here today, and we bless you today in the name of the Lord. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet today. Right on your tables are our words for our songs. Today, we're going to open with a word of prayer. Father God, we love you. We thank you for all of your goodness and all of your mercy. Yes. We thank you that this is the season of miracles. This yes. is the time when the world looks to that baby in the manger, yes. and they are open to receive yes. what Jesus Christ has to yes. say to them. And we bless your people today all around the world from wherever they're watching, wherever they're coming from today. We bless them today and we encourage them in the name of the Lord. Everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. Clap your hands one more time to the Lord. Yeah, if you would, would you take your phones right now and just click like and share and let's grow our viewing audience this morning. Go ahead and take a moment to do that today. All right, and if you would grab your lyrics, we're going to enjoy this song today. Come on, ring those bells. And we have bells for the kids here today, so we want our little kids to come on forward right now and grab a set of bells. Come on, kids, come on down. Come on down, Miss Tiffany has the bells. We want our kids to participate in this worship service today. Uh, is there? Okay, well, maybe we can uh, just set those on the table. Yeah, come right on up, kids. And let me say this to our parents and to our adults. The way that our kids learn to be active worship participants is by watching their parents and the adults. So if our parents just sit like bumps on the wall, well, guess what? That's the way your kids are going to actively worship or not actively worship. So kids are watching this morning, and we want them to participate in this worship service today. Amen. All right. Shake those bells right now. All right. Now, this song is going out in memory and in honor of Janet Stanhunt. Janet is one of our charter members here at Grace, and she's of Norwegian heritage. And every year, Janet tells me this story. She says, in Norway, at the break of dawn, as people are getting ready, they're waking up, and they're, they know they're going to make their way through the snow to the church house. They begin to ring the bells, ring the bells, and and they sing unto the Lord in, in the uh, worship of God. And so this song, we're sending it out to Janet Stanton this morning. Everybody likes to take a holiday. Everybody likes to take a rest. Spending time together with the family. Sharing lots of joy and happiness. Thank you. 
eggnog and presents and right? No. Is that right? No. Is that right, Ben? No. Is that right, Ben? No, sir. Jesus is the reason for the season. Can you say amen? Amen. So we're not going to let it out of the bag, but you're going to want to get your kids here yeah. for this presentation next week. Yeah. It's going to blow them away. I'm telling you, we are bringing in just a wonderful, wonderful guest next Sunday morning, and that is going to share the story of Christmas. And then on Christmas Eve, we're still... We're still working towards that, but we're going to have a special Christmas Eve service. And it is going to either be, it'll either be online, Facebook Live, or if the weather's good, cross your fingers, <laughs> knock on wood, pray to God. If the weather's good, we're going to do a special outdoor Christmas Eve service. And what we are planning, if the weather's good, to have people be able to pull their vehicles right in the parking lot and PJ and I will lead from this side and we're going to share the story of Christmas and enjoy each other just for about 45 minutes but we're going to worship the Lord together amen so we're we're working on those things right now and the weather is a big part of that so I, I, isn't it unbelievable that we have no snow right now and I tell you, I will not be heartbroken if we don't have a white Christmas because I can put on Bing Crosby and just listen to I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. But you know, we've been here 28 years, baby. We have. And a few years ago, I was blowing snow and complaining and whining and moaning and calling for the ambulance. And PJ said, hey, we got kids. A couple of more years, they'll be big enough to run that snowblower. <laughs> sure enough, a couple of years later, I was still blowing snow. <laughs> Away in a manger, no crib for the bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. Down where he lay, the 
just in that manger. Mm -hmm. You're no longer on a cross, no longer in a borrowed tomb. Yes. But today you reside in the hearts and souls of men and women, boys and girls. Yes. And we bless you today, Lord. Thank you. We adore you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank you today, Father, Thank in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Let all God's people say amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Praise God. Are you happy to be in God's house today? Yes. Well, we greet you today in the name of the Lord. Oh, I think you can do better than that. You have to give us a little Come on now. We're in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. And we welcome you here today. And we welcome our guests. God bless you. We're so glad you're with us. Amen. Amen. To our guests that are joining us online, we welcome you today. We welcome you to Grace Christian Church right here in the center of the universe, Albert Lee, Minnesota. So many of my friends give me a hard time when I say that, but you know what? As far as PJ and I are concerned, this is the center of the universe. We, every year, we get to travel to many different places around the world, visiting our missions and our churches and our pastors that we help lead and help mentor and help encourage. And I tell people, whenever I land on that airplane in Minneapolis, Minnesota, we come down I-35, and we start approaching those Albert Lee exits. My heart just gets filled with joy. And when we pull into that long, dark stretch as you come into Albert Lee, I just breathe a mm -hmm. sigh of relief that we're home. We're home, Mama. We're home. Praise yeah. God. And so it is just a delight to worship the Lord mm -hmm. together with you today. Amen. No place we'd rather be. One of our pastors used to say this. I'd rather be in the church house than in the best hospital in the world. Can you say amen to that? And now, come on. Don't make me come out there and wake you up. Don't make me come out there and wake you up. We're in the church house this morning. And there's a pandemic outside and the virus is real. And people are dying from that. And people are recovering from that. Can you say amen? amen? If you are alive and well and your lungs are functioning, you ought to give the Lord some praise yes. this morning. Yes. Amen. If you're alive and well this morning, you ought to give the Lord praise. Praise God. And Christmas is the season of miracles. It's when amen. God just invades the earth with his presence. Yes. And I, I tell you, I've worked all week to come together here with you in the house of the Lord. The last thing I'm going to do is sit like a bump on a log. We are in the presence of God. And the last thing I'm going to let you do is sit there and just stare at me. I will come out there and break COVID protocol just to wake you up. Amen. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord this morning. Give God a shout of praise in the house. You've got a shout of praise in the house. Amen. You have not walked into a mainline dead church. You have walked into a place of miracles where God touches people's lives, where marriages are put back together, where families get on track where the heavens open yes. and people prosper and they promote and they are moved by the presence of God. That's 
where you're at this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. PJ, lead us in our worship and giving today, will you, sweetheart? All right. So our next act of worship will be uh, giving of the Lord's tithes and our offerings. So if you're here in the building with us, we have a tithe box in the back where you can uh, deposit your tithe and offering. There are some envelopes there if you need. Or if you're here in person or online, online, you can also give online or with your device by texting to the number 77977. Yeah. Text CONNECT number 2 GRACE mm -hmm. all in caps. So CONNECT number 2 GRACE all in caps yeah. to 77977. Or there's a push pay, push pay link in the heading of this video. Or uh, there's PayPal, um, GCC, Albert Lee uh -huh. at gmail.com is the uh, email there. Or if you like a good old snail mail, P.O. Box 1, Albert Lee, Minnesota 56007. Amen. And we want to thank all of our faithful givers, all of our partners that yes. faithfully pay their tithes to the Lord. That is something that we're commanded to do by Scripture. It's not a suggestion. It is a command for us to bring the first 10% of all of our living yes. to the Lord. That's not just your wages. Those are part of your benefits, your bonuses, all those things. Sweepstakes, bingo, <laughs> lottery. Don't forget the Lord. Don't forget the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And God keeps better records than PJ does. Let me tell you something. So... I want to encourage you, take your checkbook out, take your online banking out and see where you're at, where your income is, and take that first 10% and give it to the Lord. Don't just throw the Lord a tip. Don't just throw the Lord a tip. The Lord's not your waiter. The Lord's not your server. The Lord's not your valet. God is God. Amen. Amen. And he says this to the tither, to the tithers. I will open the windows of heaven and pour yes. you out blessings so much that you can't even contain it. Amen. You want me to tell you who doesn't have to worry during a pandemic? Tithers. Right. You want me to tell you who doesn't have to worry if the economy goes into the tank? Tithers. Amen. Amen. Because they know they are giving in in God's blessings upon, upon them. We want you to be blessed. If you are part of our online church, you can go to... Connect number two, Grace 777 77977. PayPal GCC Albert Lee at gmail.com or good old snail mail P.O. Box one. We chose one so that you wouldn't be confused. P.O. Box one. Amen. Let's pray over the giving. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you give your people you. the power to get wealth. Yes. And we share that wealth with you, O oh God, mm -hmm. in accordance to your word and your people, thereby are blessed beyond measure. Amen. Your people are cheerful givers. They have no yes. reason to fear pandemic or peril or hurricane or torrential rain or anything like that, Lord, because they are covered by the almighty hand of God. We yes. want your people to be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, if you would like to, please go ahead and make your way to the giving station in the back of the sanctuary today. Please observe social distancing. God bless you. We want you to be safe. We want you to be healthy. And parents, come with your children. Grandparents, come with your children. Don't just send your children to the tithe box. Bring your children. Teach them by your example. Amen. All this week. PJ, I've been praying for young people and children and family. I'm telling you right now, and I'm going to reach out to our intercessors online today. PJ and I worked very hard with our youth staff to build our youth group to 20 strong. 20 strong. That may not sound like a big number to you, but in today's world to have 20 committed young people, that's a big deal. And during this pandemic, we have seen 16 of them disappear. 16 young people whose lives are being weighed in the balances in life. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is coming. The devil does not play fair. The devil is vicious. He's seeking to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes.
PJ and I feel like our hearts have been broken, like broken bread after pouring our lives into our youth group. I'm not complaining this morning. I'm calling the devil out and I'm calling lazy parents out this morning. Did the preacher just say lazy parents? Lazy. Yes, I am. I'm calling lazy parents. Oh, I wish I had a church full of jingle bells this morning. Because let me tell you something. The first line of defense for our children or our young people are the parents. Yes. Not the preachers, not the president, right. the parents. Right. Right. You're the ones that decided to become parents. PJ and I planned our family. We decided to have children. Yes. And when God gave us those children, we took a godly responsibility upon us to one day stand before God mm -hmm. of whether or not we would raise our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Let me tell you something. The education of our children is not up to the schools. The education of our children is up to me, yes. PJ, and you. Yes. Amen. Hear me now. Hear me now. A lot of parents say, oh, I wish they taught budgeting. I wish they taught manners. I wish they taught uh, how to balance a checkbook, how to make out a... You know, how to make a, uh, an application, mm -hmm. how to apply for... That's up to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's up to you as parents. And if you need some help, be smart enough to reach out and get some help. PJ has helped hundreds of people get into college. Right here, we got an expert right here. Yeah, she helped me get through college. She helped <laughs> her kids get through college. She helped herself get through college. And so the spiritual education, the spiritual responsibility is not up to me and PJ, it's up to you as parents. So 20 kids strong coming every Tuesday night. Every Tuesday night, PJ or myself or Aunt Tammy or Don and Kathy, we would make food for our kids. They'd come into the lounge. During the pandemic, 16 kids off the radar. I sent text messages for months, no response from the majority of them. Messages to their parents, no response. Let me tell you something. This is something that should be like a three alarm fire. Your kids, your children need to be brought by you to the church house. They should not get here five, ten minutes after church starts, come in dragging, looking like they just rolled right out of bed. No, get them here to the house of the Lord. Get them early. Get here, do some sweeping, some checking around. Get them active in the house of the Lord. When the worship hits, raise your hands and teach your kids how to worship. When it's time to give, bring them and teach them how to give. Teach them how to say amen while the preacher's preaching or oh me when the preacher's preaching. Come on now. I am calling out the devil and I'm calling out lazy parents. One day you will stand before God and give account why your kids were not in the church house. This is where they need to be. I'm going to preach a message today that would grip the hearts of your young people today. And I'm looking across here and I'm seeing young people and children that are missing. This is where they need to be. Everybody say amen. amen. I'm not going to stand responsible for your kids before the Lord without saying, God, those kids went to hell over my preaching. If they decided to go to hell or their parents participated in those kids going to hell or going to a bar or using or out there messing around with the world, I'm here to tell you that's not going to happen on my watch without sounding a strong yes. and yes. certain sound. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I'm not telling you anything that PG and I have not done. I'm telling you from before those kids were out of this beautiful womb. I was preaching the word to them. I was prophesying over them. I was laying hands on them. I was calling them to lead the nations. I was calling them to be preachers of the gospel, to use all their gifts and talents that God would deposit in them. And when they came out of the womb, we took them straight to the house of the Lord. We put them into the hands of men and women of God that dedicated them to God. And we made sure that they were in church. And you know where my kids sat growing up? On the front row. We used to call it the splash zone. And they took notes. And I would check their notes after church. Amen. Amen. And they were here cleaning toilets and running sound and, and worshiping and active in, 
in it because I'm telling you, if you raise your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, even if they go wayward, you won't ever have to worry. Right. You won't have to worry. Did I do what was right? No, mm -hmm. because you will know that you did what was right. Yes. Now, you walked into a church where there's a preacher that's going to tell you right where the rubber meets the road because we love you. We love you and we love your children. So where should your kids be on, on Wednesday nights? Well, now we got Kids Connect going on yeah. online. Yeah. So from uh, 5 to 5.30 or 5.30 to 6, whatever the time is, your kids should be logged on with PJ and uh, Pastor G and Aunt Tammy and Whitney sharing the Word of God. And then if you have teenagers that are still in junior high and high school, they should be online with Pastor G and PJ. That's where they need to be. I don't care if you got to grab them by the nap of the neck and say, this is where you're going to be because I'm going to stand before God one day to give account for you. Somebody say amen. 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 So I've been praying for you all week. I've been praying for you all week. Now this doesn't make me anything special, but the other night I spent the entire night in prayer praying for parents and praying for their children and praying for young people, crying out before the Lord, shedding tears before the Lord, calling out these 16 young people's names before the Lord and their parents' names before the Lord and the four that remain faithful. I'm going to tell you who they are so you don't have to worry. Ben Cheeseman is one. Abigail Cheeseman is two. I don't see Jason or Michaela here this morning. They should be here. But Jason is three. And Michaela is four. And just like I'm calling out lazy parents today, I'm going to honor James and Angie yeah. for making a commitment to get their kids to the house of the Lord, whether they like it or not. They are here. God bless you, James and Angie. Amen. There is no perfect set of parents on the earth. No. That's no excuse for not doing everything you can. And let me just say this. Even if you drag your child in here and they got cornbread in their eyes and they're ticked <laughs> off and they're half asleep, I don't care. I don't care if your child comes in here and lays on the floor. I don't care if they bring their sleeping bag and pillow. If you will just get them within earshot of the word of God, God has a chance at reaching your kids. Yeah. Amen, 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 amen. I mean, just think, I'm not even in my sermon yet. This is free. I'm going to charge you for the sermon. Just think about those, those four buddies that had their paralyzed friend. The Lord revealed this to me last week in prayer. Their buddy couldn't get to Jesus on their own. He was paralyzed. And when they brought him on his bed, they couldn't get even close to the door because so many people were packed there to see Jesus. They went up on the roof. They tore the shingles off the roof and they let their friend down in front of Jesus because they knew that if they could get him to Jesus, Jesus would have a word for their friend. And when they let him down in front of Jesus, the first thing Jesus said to that dude was, hey, buddy, I've forgiven your sins. I have forgiven your sins. Second thing he said to him, by the way, take up your bed and walk. So he got a word, they got a word to Jesus, not because of that guy. The Bible says very specifically, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, your sins are forgiven. Take up your bed and walk. So if you're a parent and you're fighting with your kids and they're being foolish, they're saying, I don't want to go to church. I don't believe in that. Who cares? You're <laughs> under my roof. You're coming to my church. That's Amen. Right. That's what those people did. I'm sure those people didn't give that dude that was paralyzed just any, any spiritual healer out there. They took him to the one that could make a difference. When you connect your kids and your family with Grace Christian Church and SoCal Connect, you bring them into an atmosphere where God will make a difference in their life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. So I don't care if you bring them in here asleep or high or drunk or whatever. Just get them here 
Because the Lord's going to look at him and say, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and forgive your sins while you're here? Why don't we go ahead and heal you while you're here? Yeah. Am I preaching in the right church this morning? Yeah. All right. Praise God. Now, all of that was free. This next one's going to cost you. Praise God. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 15. And my lovely partner here in ministry, PJ, it was her birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, baby. And I'm telling you, this is one powerful woman. She turned 58 yesterday. Oh, yeah, 58 yeah. years young. Yes, she did. She's not one bit ashamed of her age. She rocks it. You know, she's not on one medication. Not on one med other than me. Other than me. The biggest love pill she's ever taken in all of life. All of this is for you, lady. All of this right here. Amen. Doesn't take one medication. And PJ, I'm so proud to be your husband. I love you so much. You're the queen of the whole earth. I told her this week, I said, you know what, baby? I've never met anybody more beautiful than you. 32 years ago, 33 years ago, when I first saw her, she took my breath away. I'm telling you, every single day, at some point of the day, this lovely lady takes my breath away. PJ, happy birthday to you. Welcome to 58. Yeah. I've never seen anybody rock it as good as you, baby. <laughs> Would you read the word of the Lord this morning? Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 15. And let me just say why I speak openly and romantically to my wife. Because men need to learn how to do this. Men need to learn how to speak to their wives as if they are the queen of the whole earth. This business of I told her I loved her 40 years ago. So, you know what? <laughs> Fool me on that. Don't make me come out there and grab you by the collar. Tell that woman you love her, learn her love language, speak it to her. And women, this lady right here takes care of me. And you need to follow her example. Somebody say amen. amen. My amen. God, you're getting a general conference of buffet. And likewise, women, women, to your husbands. Treat them with respect. Speak it now, baby. Speak, Speak it. with respect and love and honor. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Luke 2, 8 through 15. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. 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 But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the Messiah. The Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Amen, amen, amen. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Father, your word is blessed. Bless me today that I can bless your people. Yes. To the glory of God the Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have been speaking on this series about God is with us. We are not alone. Mm -hmm. We are not helpless. And we are quickly... Approaching the day in which we totally focus in on this beautiful, bouncing baby boy, Yeshua, Jesus, the one who saves his people from their sin. And today I want to declare to you a question. I want to ask each and every one of you a question. I want to pull you into this Christmas story this morning in this season of miracles and ask you this question will you hear will you hear when god 
calls. Will you hear when God calls? Tell them I want double pepperoni. <laughs> 501 West College Street. <laughs> <laughs> Mushrooms, green peppers, jalapenos, and sauerkraut. Amen. Will you hear when God calls? Just like somebody called right there, we all heard it. We all heard it. And again, we all hear it. Will you hear when God calls? The scriptures that PJ read to us today were the fulfillment of hundreds and hundreds of years of prophecy that God speaking to prophets of old, that there was coming a child that would change everything. Isaiah declared, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall rest upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. God, through His Holy Spirit, would move upon people and they would prophesy that Jesus would come, was coming. They would write on old parchments and they would send it to different areas around the world and they would declare, there's coming a child and He's going to make all the difference in the world. How many parents can attest this morning that your children have made all the difference in the world in your life? Amen. Yes, amen. 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 And that child, Jesus Christ, that would be born had been prophesied. And on this night, the angels appeared to lowly shepherds, working people, blue collar workers. The angels of the Lord left that beautiful place, that new Jerusalem, and they came down to the earth and they appeared to those shepherds. And the Bible says the shepherds were terrified. They were terrified. Do you know right now during this pandemic, there are so many people that are terrified. Even believers that should not be terrified are terrified. That's not a judgment call. That's a reality check. It's an assessment of where so many people are. But the angel of the Lord appeared and they said, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, goodwill to all people. Yes. This hit me last week and this week as I was in intense prayer, praying for the messages that God has been giving us in this season. It hit me. How many people are not living under the peace of God? How many people are not living under the favor of God? But when God sent his angels, he sent his peace, his favor for everybody. He yes. sent his goodwill to everybody. That was the declaration. Peace on earth, goodwill to all people. If you are not living in the favor of God right now, I'm here to tell you today, the call is going forth. The peace and the favor and the grace and the goodwill of God is for you today. Yeah. It's for yeah. you today. Yeah. It cannot be found anywhere else but in relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The peace of God with everybody. And notice what the angel said. This is good news to everybody. Yes. It will bring joy to all people. Yes. Joy to all people. Why? Because Jesus had finally come. Mm -hmm. But this was not the first declaration. This declaration was a general blanket call to everybody. To the shepherds and to everyone. But then there was a previous call to a man named Joseph. The angel Gabriel came to Joseph in a dream. And he said, Joseph, don't be afraid. I love it. Throughout all the Christmas story, this theme is don't be afraid. Yeah. Jesus is here. The one that will make all the difference is here. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you those today who struggle every day with fear, worry, doubt, and anxiety. 
There is no condemnation for you today. Jesus and the angel and these messengers say to you, don't be afraid. Come away from that. Take a break. Get that off of your shoulders today. The one that is going to make the greatest difference in your life has appeared to you today. Yeah. Be not afraid. Amen. Don't be terrified. God's grace is for you. Joseph, don't be afraid. Don't be fearful to take Mary to be your wife. Mm -hmm. Somebody wrote recently, an unplanned pregnancy is what made the greatest difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Mary wasn't yet in the family planning process. Mm -hmm. She was engaged to this guy named Joseph. They had not yet tied the knot. They had not yet consummated. Things were falling in place for them. They were not out of order. How many are glad that God is a God of order? Yeah. Amen. Amen. God is a God of order. Mm -hmm. But while they were engaged, she was found to be pregnant. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. But she was pregnant from not any man. Mm -hmm. She was pregnant by reason of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's when Joseph received this dream. Don't be afraid. Go ahead and marry Mary. And then Mary receives the visitation in the sixth month from the angel Gabriel. And he says to her, Mary, don't be alarmed. Don't be afraid. The favor of God is with you. And God has chosen your empty, vacant womb that no man has yet touched. And God is going to deposit the seed of the Holy Spirit within you. And that which is conceived in you is of the Holy Ghost. And you are to name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Amen. The Bible says that Joseph was troubled. The Bible says that the shepherds were terrified. The Bible says that Mary was troubled at these words. Let me tell you something today. One thing you need to learn about God is God will show up at a time when you were never expecting him. And he's going to show up with a word that's going to blow you away. But if you will stick with it, if you will receive it, God will do his work in your life. The Bible says that he is faithful to complete his work in you. Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen, amen, amen. So when the call of God went forth, the shepherds were terrified. Joseph was troubled. Mary was troubled, but God kept on speaking. Amen. And then there was a call that went to the head of state, King Herod, the big enchilada himself. <laughs> and it didn't come through an angel. It came through some wise men that God was already speaking to, that God was declaring in the heavens to them. God never spoke audibly like the angel did. God didn't speak that way to the wise men. But he put his star in the east. The psalmist wrote, the heavens declare the glory of God and the earth shows forth his handiwork. And God put his star in the east. And these wise men, they were Zoroastrians. They, this is the oldest religion on earth. The Zoroastrians were looking to the heavens, reading the skies as astronomers. And when that star appeared in the sky, they said to one another, the Magi said, let us follow that star. Let us seek that God. History tells us the God that they were seeking, his name was Ahura Mazda. That was the main God of the Zoroastrians. And they went looking for this Ahura Mazda. But God was putting forth his call throughout nature to these seekers. They didn't know who they were seeking for. But God knew that there was something missing in their life. So he put forth his call in the heavens. I want you to know there are going to be people that are reached through preaching. And there are going to be some that will never darken the door of a sanctuary. But God will speak to them through nature. And they will realize that what they were seeking for is found not in anybody else, but in Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. 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 And so they came to Jerusalem 
following that, sky, that star in the sky. And they came to the king. Now notice the influence that these guys had. They had the power to talk to the king. Not all of us here today, even though we're American citizens, not all of us will get the opportunity to speak to the president. But some will. Some will have great influence. Some will have more money. Some will have more political collateral. And so they will get an audience with the pre president. These wise men, these magi, had some clout behind their name. And they were able to go and get an audience with the king. And when they stood before the king, they said, Oh, king, there's a king born in this region. For we have seen his star in the east and we have come together to worship him. And notice this. The Bible says when this call went forth, Herod was troubled in his heart and all of Jerusalem with them. Herod became furious and he calls his scribes and he says, I've not heard of this king. Who is this king? And they brought to him the ancient scrolls of the prophets. And they began to read to him that, O oh Bethlehem, though you are the smallest among the tribes, and though you are the smallest among the region, out of you will come this treasure, the Messiah. And Herod is troubled. The shepherds were troubled. Mary was troubled. Joseph was troubled. The wise men, they saw the star and they rejoiced. Herod was troubled in all of Jerusalem with him. Some of these were open to receive the call of God. When the shepherds saw it, they were first terrified. But as the angel spoke peace to them, as the angel spoke favor to them, one of the leaders among the shepherds says, let us go, let us go to Bethlehem and let us find this child wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a they moved with action once they heard. They moved past terrified and fear. And they moved to action. Joseph, he was first troubled. And then he moved with action when he received the call. Mary was troubled. And then at the end, she says, Oh, my soul magnifies the Lord. And may everything that he has in his heart be done through me. Amen. She was moved to action. The angel said, Go visit Elizabeth, as she was moved to action. The wise men were moved to action when they heard, saw the call of God. Herod was not. He was moved with terror and anger and pride and frustration. He also moved to action, but he sent out an edict through his runners and through his heralders, and he said, I'm going to kill every baby one years old and younger. I'm here to declare to you today that when the call of God goes forth, there will be people that are terrified by the call. There will be people that will be worried by the call of God, but they will move past those things and they will receive the peace and the grace and the favor of God and it will move them to action to pursue God. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. And then there will be those that will close themselves off when they hear the call of God, they will shut their ears. They will look in every direction. They too will move in action, but not towards God, but away from God. The question for each of us today is, will you hear when God calls? Joseph received. Mary received. The wise men followed and they went seeking. The shepherds rejoiced and responded. Herod did not. Turn to your neighbor if you have somebody sitting next to you and say, Herod did not. Herod was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. Now let me tell you a story. Last Wednesday, the first Wednesday of December, I was driving in my car. Now if you've ever ridden in the car with me, you know that on the coldest days, I roll down all my windows and open up my moonroof. And I turn my heat on to 80 and my fan on high. And I just enjoy that heat 
blowing on me. My, my seat heaters don't work anymore. <laughs> but I put those babies on. Thank God for PJ's new vehicle. The steering wheel's heated. The seat is heated. It massages you. Yeah. But I open up my moonroof. I roll down all the windows and I turn my heat on and I turn my music up. And I throw my arm out the window and I enjoy it like I'm in Southern California. And I was driving up Main Street the other day. Beautiful day. Probably 40 degrees. All the windows open. Music pumping. Heater up. And all of a sudden what happens on the first Wednesday of every month in Freeborn oh, County, mm -hmm. what happens? Sirens. The sirens go off. Mm -hmm. And the sirens were sounding, sounding, sounding. Mm -hmm. I started here at the church, they were going off. I made it to Total Glass, they were going off. <laughs> I made it to Broadway and Maine, and they were going off. I came down the hill, headed towards Garfield, and they were still going, they were going, they were going, they were going. I said, oh my God, I shut my sunroof, and then I shut the back windows, and then I shut the shotgun window, and they kept going, and they kept going and going. I was like, who put the Energizer Bunny in the Freeborn County Sirens? They would not stop. They would not stop. And when I rolled up my last window, I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, Gee, I'm trying to speak to your heart. I'm trying to arrest your heart right now through this, this man-made alarm system. Because I want you to speak to your churches. I want you to speak to the nations of the world. I want you to let them know that just like those sirens... I am calling. I am putting forth my call in this city, in yes. this county, yes. in this yes. state, in this region, in this nation, and all around the world. I am putting forth my call, and I'm letting it go longer and louder and stronger because I'm reaching for the hearts and souls yes. of men and women yes. in this season. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And it's annoying. And it's long, and it's not different tones, it's the same tone, same and you can hear it going and going and going, and just like you, you said, oh my God, this is getting annoying, and you <laughs> shut the first window, and the next two, and the next one, and the next one, but still, my call was getting through to you, because gee, I'm dealing with your heart today, so that you can receive the message so that you can declare it on this international platform that in this hour, God is putting forth his call. Yeah. Will you hear when God calls? Yeah. Will you hear when God calls? I guarantee you right now in this house, there are people that are listening. There are people that are receiving. There are people that are already on the roast. They're already on what they're going to take take out for to go home and eat. They're already on tomorrow's problems. They're already on next week's worries. They're already on what they got to deal with when they get home. Will you hear when God calls? Yes. yes. And then I remembered a conversation that I had as a city councilor. I served three terms on the Alberley City Council. And we were receiving calls from various parts of the city that people that their siren was not working in their subdivision. Mm -hmm. And they would call the county and they would call our chief, our, our fire chief and our chief of police. And then there were some that were talking about it on party line and they were coming to the council. They were saying, we couldn't hear it. We couldn't hear the sirens. People said the sirens were going off and we couldn't hear them. Mm -hmm. And then I remember having a conversation with our former Fire Chief Paul Steeler. Paul's a good man. Mm -hmm. He's a conscientious man, a great leader, a pillar in our community. And he came and he told us, he said, I need you to know something, that because of new technology in building, hear me now, let me have your attention. Mm -hmm. Because of the new technology in building, the new houses that are being built, their roofs and their attics are so well insulated. Their windows are so high tech. They have insulation factors, high RH factors. The walls are thicker with more 
a powerful insulation. The even, even the floors, they have in-floor heating, etc. Like this, garages, well insulated, finished. And these homes, these new homes are so well insulated that they cannot hear the sirens when they're sounding. It has nothing to do with the siren. It has nothing to do with the call. It has nothing to do with the messenger. It has everything to do with how guarded these new homes are. You see, our, our home is, I don't know, 30, 40 years old. Not too hot on the insulation, not too <laughs> hot on the windows, you know. We still put up blow dryer plastic on some of our windows. Yeah. To get that RH factor out. We hear the signs with no problems. We hear the mowing and the vacuums and the potato, 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 you know. You know what I'm talking about? But so many of these new houses, they're so well insulated. They're so well guarded. The Lord spoke to me. He said, George, there are people today that are putting up walls around them. And they're protecting themselves. They're guarding themselves so well that it's more difficult to hear when they call. Are you hearing me this morning? Yes. And then the Lord spoke to me. He said, I'm going to give you three reasons. I need you to focus in on me right now like you've never focused to, to a preacher before. Three reasons why people could miss the call of God when it goes forth. Mm -hmm. You see, we all put up walls. Mm -hmm. We all put up walls around us. The book of Proverbs says this, that a person with an offended spirit is harder to be won than the walls of a great castle. Mm -hmm. A brother offended is harder to be won than seizing the walls of a city. Mm -hmm. Three reasons the Lord gave me, not all of them, but three reasons why you might be too insulated to hear the call of God. Number one, pride. Pride. You see, the angels came to the lowly shepherds. They didn't appear to the king in his palace. They came to lowly shepherds. But when the wise men came to the king, the king responded with pride. The king, who was a Jew, didn't even know that a Jewish Messiah was coming. He led the people, but he had built up walls of pride all around him. He was the only king to sit on the throne. And this is what pride does to us. Sisters and brothers, hear me this morning. Pride puts you on the throne and it dethrones God. Pride says, I know more than everybody around me. I know more than God. I know more than my peers. I know more than my contemporaries. I know more than my pastor. I know more than the word. I sit on the throne. I live for me. There are so many people living today, young and old, who live as if they are the center of the universe. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. They only care about themselves. Mm -hmm. Even some that you might confront to their face. Do you think you're the center of the universe? Oh yeah. I don't care about anybody else but me. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's not need. It's greed. Mm -hmm. I sit on the throne. I only care about my belly being fed. I only care about my comfort. And if I have to step on you to comfort myself, that is what I will do. I'm here to tell you this morning, pride closes us off. It insulates us from hearing the call of God. But I'm here to tell you today, the Bible says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. The word of God teaches us that God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. The Bible says humble yourselves before the Lord and you will be exalted. The word of God teaches us whoever will be the greatest among you must first be the servant to all. Mm -hmm. Pride insulates us from hearing the call of God. If you are filled with pride this morning, you're not going to be able to hear that clear and certain call that God is sending forth in this hour of miracles saying, come and humble yourselves. 
Bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Bring in, come in your raggedy clothes. Come however you are, because the King of Kings has lowered himself to the level of lowly humanity. Amen. Hear the call of God today, but pride will insulate you. Pride will insulate you mm -hmm. from hearing the call of God. Number two, hurt and disappointment will shut you off from hearing the call of God. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you with how many people PJ and I interact with every day of the year that are so hurt, they are so offended, mm -hmm. they are so disappointed. Mm -hmm. Things that go all the way back to their childhood. Things that they've been holding on. You don't know what my mama did to me. You don't know what my papa did to me. You don't know what my grandpa or my aunt or my uncle or my sister or my brother or my teacher or my first pastor or my, my first preschool teacher did to me. And they carry this hurt all the way through life. And then when the call of God goes forth, they say, I can't trust you, God, because humans hurt me. Mm -hmm. I'm not making light of that this morning. I'm not devaluing your life experience. What I'm saying to you today is a dependence upon the feeling and the emotions that hurt and disappointment gives us. And let me tell you something, some people just love to be miserable. Mm -hmm. You could give them all the counseling in the world. You could give them all the prayers. You could preach the gospel to them. You can lay your hands on them and speak in tongues and Prophesy and everything else, but if they don't want to let go of that hurt and disappointment, God Himself cannot penetrate that insulation. There are people that are still wounded from what their fathers did. Therefore, there's a disconnect from their Heavenly Father to them. I can't tell you how many times over the years on Father's Day that people have said, I, 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 I'm just in pain. I'm in pain mm -hmm. to listen on Father's Day. I have to drag myself to the church when you're talking about our Father who art in heaven. When, I, when you, G, talk about your dad and how great your relationship, that hurts me. It pains me. And I'm here to tell you today that the enemy will continue to take advantage of you until you bring that like it was gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and lay it at the manger and say, Jesus, I need to be healed from you. I want to hear the call of God. And you know what? I had a good dad. He was a good man. But there were some things that were broken in my own death. There were some dysfunctions in my own death, in things that he did, in things that he said, in ways that he belittled me in anger at times, that it, it hurt my relationship with God. And it took time to get past those things. And I've laid before the Lord and said, God, I'm hurt here. And I have trouble trusting in you. And I'm telling you every time, never once has God bent down with, with destructive words or with harmful words or with depressing or condemning words, but those always are come to me, all ye that are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Yeah. But you don't know my regrets, preacher. You don't know what I wish I would have said or what I wish I would have made good. And let me tell you this today. If those people are dead and they are in the ground, Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. Don't waste your life. Don't throw your life away. Don't ruin your kids' Father's Day and Mother's Day because you didn't resolve those things. Bring them to the Lord in this season of miracles and say, God, I can't seem to get past this. But my preacher preached that that baby was the one that would be the game changer in my life. I'm going to run the risk. I'm going to roll the dice and say, Lord, here is my hurt and my yes, disappointment. Yes, yes. Will you hear? Will you hear the call of God? Again, I am not devaluing your human experiencing. What I'm hoping is to declare the call of God upon your life. And number three, the cares of life. Mm -hmm. The cares of life. Mm -hmm. Jesus spoke repeatedly.
don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to take care of itself. Not even a sparrow falls from the sky that your heavenly Father does not see. The birds, the ants, the creatures, they don't sow so that they have to reap. That's a human phenomenon. The grass is here and then it withers and it fades and another blade of grass takes its place. God is the one that has set these things in motion. It is not your job to try to be God. It is not your job nor my job to try to cover every and control every single nuance in the world. There are parents that I'm preaching to this morning and there are people that I'm preaching to right now that live your life in hell on earth because you are determined to control every single thing in your spouse's life, everything in your child's life, and yet you cannot even control your own life. Mm -hmm. I'm preaching, I'm sending out a call this morning that God is saying, come to me, come to the manger, come to that baby that will change your yes. life forever. Yes, amen, amen. Control, 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 control. You control everything from where your family goes on vacation to what your husband or your wife wears or how they sneeze or how they walk or how they... Let me tell you something. Give yourself a break today. The cares of life will only insulate you from hearing the call of God. They will only shut off the call of God. I'm here, to, I'm here today. Go over there and throw up in that window. Open that door and say, God, I want you to speak to my heart today. I want you to speak to my heart today because I want to be changed in yes. this season of marriage. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Everybody's got to walk on eggshells around people because they have so much of the cares of life. Mm -hmm. They can't even enjoy themselves. They can't even remember what David said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation mm -hmm. and uphold me with my free spirit, with thy free spirit. I'm telling you, this week I laid on my face and cried out to God for the many families, Christian families and Christian marriages and Christian relationships and pastors and wives whose lives are so jacked up, living in such dysfunction. You come to church and you put on a good show and then you go home and you fight like cats and dogs. I'm telling you right now, I listened to a preaching on Friday night. By Pastor Danny Willis from Chicago. He pastors the largest multicultural church in Chicago called the Lighthouse of All Nations. And he was sharing some troubling, troubling statistics about ministries right now and ministers from the Barna and the Fuller Institutes. He said pastoral resignations are up. 200% during the pandemic. And let me just look into this camera and look around this building today and say, you think you've got problems? Preachers like us are resigning. 200% it's risen in the pandemic. 83% of clergy spouses want their spouse to resign because of the pressure during the pandemic. Mm. And you think you've got problems? Only 6% of American congregants are actively participating in worship right now during the pandemic. Mm. And then you think you've got problems? This is the pressure. These are the cares of life that your ministers are carrying. And if you think PJ and I are exempt from it, you've got another thing coming. If you think that we have not been troubled by this pandemic or that we don't get discouraged or that depression doesn't try to come, come, us, come against us or we don't want to just feel like fighting like cats and dogs or that we don't fight like cats and dogs someday. I'm telling you, PJ has strengthened so much in the past 32 years. She used to just let me run all over her. She used to let me control the weather and everything. Yeah, I was the mighty macho king. I was the Lion King when PJ married me, full of machismo and pride and stupidity. 
If I got up and said it was 70 degrees, that's what I expected her to believe. And today, she is a rod of iron in our home. <laughs> she is a pillar for God in our home. There are times that I'll start getting out of, out of whack and she'll put that little hand up. And her little pinkies are so short. If you've never seen her, she had tiny little pinkies. So put up her little hand like this. Put up her little hand like this. She said, you stop it right there, mister. You knock it off. You calm down. And every time I think, why is it okay for you to tell me to calm down? But I can't tell you to calm down. <laughs> Settle down. Puts up that little hand. You knock it off right now. I'm going to make you practice what you do. And I'm telling you, my spirit goes into check and King George comes off the throne <laughs> and I realize that's the call of God in my life. You see, that should be the health of our marriages. That should be the health of our families. When the enemy starts moving, and we could easily just blame it on the devil. Oh, this is the devil. This is my DNA. This is my experiences. You see, the cares of life shut us off from hearing the call of God. What God wants us to do today. What does God want us to do today? He wants us to humble ourselves. Mm -hmm. Some of you spouses need to go home and get on your knees and apologize for the way that you've spoken and treated each other. Mm -hmm. Some of you parents need to go home and get on your knees and speak to your children and say, I'm sorry for the words that I spoke. I'm repenting before God right now. I'm sorry for the way that I treated you differently. And this mm -hmm. is what I... Did and my preferences were here and that and that. You need to go home today. Some of you children need to go home and get on your knees before your parents and before God and say, I'm making this right today. I'm going to humble myself so that I can hear the call of God. I'm going to let go of that hurt and pride into the presence of God. God's favor is upon me. He's come to set me free. And I'm going to lay these cares of life aside. So church people need to go to their leaders and apologize. Dr. Andrew, Dr. Dan Willis said for 10 months now, the pulpit has been caring for the pew, and the pew has not cared for the pulpit. Some of you need to send a message, say, I'm sorry for just checking out for all these months. Some of you parents need to get on the phone with your leaders and with your youth leaders and your staff and say, you know what, I'm sorry for being a lazy, non-caring parent. I'm sorry for just me carrying the cares of life. I'm telling you right now, God is sending forth the tornado siren right now. Are you going to close your windows? Are you going to put your noise-canceling headphones on and turn the music up? Are you going to stick your fingers in the air and say, ah, la, 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 I can't hear you? Let me tell you today, God has sent you a preacher with a word of repentance and humility and for us to get on track with God. Time is short. Eternity is long. Hell is hot. And time is short. God is putting forth his call today. Let's stand to our feet. Ooh, hallelujah. You know what? This morning as I was worshiping the Lord, I said, God, thank you for parents that insisted on me going to church. And they were right there, leading the way. I sat back this morning and listened to one of my favorite preachers in one of my favorite churches, C3 Church, out of Hudson, Ellsworth, Wisconsin. They were worshiping. And I saw PKs leading worship, Grant and Mackenzie Humphrey leading worship. Just leading worship and singing with their hands lifted. Grant McKenzie just had a baby, and McKenzie's already on stage leading worship. And I said, God, thank you for my parents. And I just closed my eyes and remembered seeing my parents with their hands worshiping God. Amening the preacher with their Bibles in hands and their notebooks, taking notes. I, I just look back and see my dad on stage preaching and leading, my mom on stage leading. I said, that's how I learned to be a worshiper. That's how I learned to be a worshiper. How did I learn to be a tither? My parents, my dad sitting down say, look at this is how much I make. And then I take the first 10% and I give it to God. Mm -hmm. I watched my mother in a missions conference take her two carat diamond ring, slip it off her finger, throw it in the offering plate and said, sell it and send the money to missionaries. Mm -hmm. I watched my mother drive her beautiful Fiat Spider sports car to church. Pop the top up. 
bring the title and put it in the offering plate and said, sell this car. I don't need another car. Send the money to feed poverty kids in orphanages around the world. That's how we learn to do what we do. God is putting forth his call today. ourselves too much from hearing the call of God. Lord, may this message come through with conviction and with power. May the Holy Spirit prick us in our hearts. May it not take some tragedy before we fall on our face before God. May it not take some great loss in our life before we build a family altar. Before we cry out to God. Your word says it is the goodness of God that draws people to repentance. Lord, in this hour of miracles, in this hour of power right now, Lord, you're reaching for your people. Bless them and keep them and watch over them today. Cause your faith, please, nobody moving. We're right now in a very spiritual part of this service. As we bless your people right now, Father, may their hearts be arrested by the move of God right now. Mm -hmm. Forgive us, Father, when we treat this just as a social hour mm -hmm. or just as some extracurricular activity or just some duty. May our hearts be open to God mm -hmm. to receive the call. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Who did I speak to today? May I see your hand this morning? Is there anybody that wants special prayer this morning? I want to pray for you. I feel God moving and touching somebody's heart. Do you want prayer? Just step forward right here. I won't touch you. We'll keep our distance. If you want, if you want prayer this morning, I want you to come. I want you to come. God bless you. God bless you as you come. That's good. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Can you pray some Jesus? God bless you as you come. Father. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you for your people that have come forward today, that have been brave enough to say, I felt the Lord hook me in my heart. God, may you bless them, may you keep them, may you watch over them. If their hearts have been pricked today, Lord, may you bring your oil of joy and gladness and pour it on their wounds today. May they receive the grace and the favor and the word of God. And may they move with action, O oh Lord, towards God and not away from God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. May you go in peace. Now, will you lift your hand for the blessing today? Now, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he grant you his peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. It was so good to have you with us today. Would you clap your hands into the Lord today? God bless you. Go in peace. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Amen.